Hey, it's Bridget. Nice to see you. Hi. Let's see here. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. We're going to have a conversation today with Prince Rogers Nelson and the afterlife. And do you know why we're going to talk to Prince? Because we are at the Country Inn in Suites in Chanhassen, and Minnesota. The Country Inn in Suites is a hotel that Prince his entourage was known to stay at. It's not that far from Paisley Park. It's like a walk. If I wanted to walk, I could walk. It's less than a mile from here. And that's where I'm at this weekend because I had the opportunity to go to Paisley Park for a viewers party for the movie Under the Cherry Moon, which was one of uh, the movies that Prince actually did. Not everybody knows about that one. I didn't know about that one until I became familiar with you all who love Prince. And so the PRDs or a group that I kind of hosted for some time after from like 2016 until about 20, 2016 until 2019, like three or four years online. Um, PRDs is what we call ourselves of purple raindrops. That's what we called ourselves. So yeah, so I'm here and I thought, hey, let's take advantage of the opportunity of actually being in this hotel room to have a conversation with Prince, especially because I was just at Paisley last night. Let's have this talk. Let's have this talk. He says, what did you think? So what did you think of it? I think that Under the Cherry Moon, the movie, it's black and white, you guys. It is and filmed in Paris. Beautiful. And... I think it's fun. I like that movie the best because it really um, showcases your personality, your sense of humor. And you guys know he's kind of quirky in his sense of humor. He's funny. He's goofy. He really is goofy. And I've said that for years, you guys, in my channeling and afterlife connection with him as far as from his his perso persona or his personality that comes through. I still see you like a brother, I have to say. And the ladies that I went with, it was funny because I said, yeah, his body, you guys, his body is like a beautiful woman's body, like so like perfectly sculpted, like just this tiny little body. And just I'm like, geez, like envy of women like I, that would be now I would like to have a little body like that. That's nice, you know, and you could tell because the costumes and stuff totally showed off his midsection, which back in like the 90s, that was the thing. Anyway, I remember that myself, too. So. I don't know, but it's just, it's just, it's interesting what you notice, you know, but, uh, <laughs> so I noticed, totally noticed that. Let me just say I did and, um, have an appreciation and respect for being fit like that because he was definitely fit. So, um, I think you're a, actually a good actor. I mean, I really think, although him may say this because it sounds weird to say Prince is a good actor. I think the character that you played was something so well known to you and such a part of you and a facet of your personality, your persona, that that's what was happening. Because I can't imagine you just acting like picking up a different character and playing it necessarily. Maybe I could see you maybe a little bit, but I'm like, wow, that was that character must have really felt some like an opportunity for you maybe, I don't know, to just express or to be yourself. I'm not sure, but it feels like it has dimension to it and it has real, it has dimension and it's real, like depth, you know? So it was cool. I He's talking, he's asking me, did you like it? Did you like it? Did you like the, like not the movie, but the experience? Yes, I did. And you should know, I didn't know that the song Kiss came from that. The Parade album, I guess, the song Kiss. That's good. That was a good song. I like the song Mountains, and I, I knew that the Mountains was in that one. I like that one, too. So it's nice to see the, to have the music and see the, the storyline. And it was just, we were in the soundstage, you guys, at Paisley Park, and, and it was just this big screen, and oh, it was really, it was cool. It was cool. It, it was a little collectively the other fans that were there and the fam that was there the people who appreciate your work um there was a little bit of a sadness yeah but not quite as much as i've felt there before it feels like there's this longevity of a legacy that now seems much more pronounced than it had been for the few years after your death it feels like the energy there doesn't feel so sad and heavy it has this kind of remembrance energy that is 
is I think inspiring to us as people because we then can see how one person's life can really, things that you did before really do last. They can last. And it's not just for famous people, it's for us. Like the families we have, the values we instill in our kids, the experiences we give to other people in our friendships, the adventures we have, the travels we have, the jobs we have, and the things that we don't do also. You know, there's like, all of these things make up the imprint we leave on the world. And, and to me, last night, that really stood out. Do, can you say some things about that? How you feel about, how do you feel about that? The whole idea of legacy? Because we've talked about this briefly before, but I'm curious now, it's been a couple of years, so. He says, um, it's like the format changes, you know, you can, it's the same song. He says, it's the same song, but you can change the tempo. You can change the instruments. You can change, change up a few things here and there. He says, but the undertone is the same. It's the same. He's like, um, it feels like he's, he's sharing that a natural part of our lives is to leave a legacy or know that we made a difference or not a made a difference, made an impact like that. We, he says, okay, can I try to say it exactly? that we've impacted the world in a better way than if we hadn't been here. That's, I think, what humanity is trying to accomplish and it's failing miserably at times, he says, failing miserably at times. He says, but it, you gotta keep faith and do your best, what you can do, he says, and, and then you know at the end of the day that it's enough. You know, it's got to be enough. He says, you're never going to be done. You're never going to be done. Like he's really saying like from personal, personal experience, he's sharing, you're never going to be done. He's like, there's always going to be more to do. There's always going to be things left undone. So. So then how do we do this? Like, how do we get through, like, how do we get up and go through life every day knowing that we can't control everything? If we do A plus B, it doesn't always equal C. There's a lot of unknowns in the world right now. We're entering into a holiday kind of season, um, end of the year. Probably when I'll share this, it'll probably be the end of 2021. How do we keep going? You know, I mean, not everybody's lives are like just filled with sunshine, you know, and even the people who are sunshine people are having some struggles at times and it's unusual. It's like upsetting, like off-putting kind of thing. <clears throat> Do you have any advice for us about that? He says, what, staying positive? Like being positive? He says, listen to music. Listen to your favorite artists. Buy a great piece of art, he says. Read a really good book, like a really good booker. He's like, eat some, eat some good food. And he's like, he's trying to say like, savor things, like really, really appreciate when you are receiving something, you're experiencing something, really appreciate that someone else had to have presented that, made that, done that, created the album, written the book, made the dinner for you for for you to eat at the restaurant etc that that someone had to have gone through all the steps to get to that point to make that so that you in your moment can receive it can have it and he says it's not about gratitude it's not even about that he says it's about the contemplation of what it takes to get here here in each moment and there's like this levity, you guys. He's making me feel like this is important. You listening? Are you listening? He says, yeah, you listening? It's important. It's important. Acknowledge the work it takes to get here and don't be afraid of the work it takes to get here. Everything seems hard. Yeah, because you haven't done it. When you do it, it's not so hard. And you spend so much time complaining about it that you're wasting your energy instead of just doing it or trying the thing. It's like, you're not going to be great at everything. You're not going to be the one that should be making the dinners as the chef in the restaurant, but, or the music. Let's just be clear. Some of y'all should not be singing. It's 
what he's saying. Some of y'all should not be singing. <laughs> that would be me. Not singing, but I still do because it's fun. When it's really loud and everybody else's, then that's okay. <laughs> you know, drowning out, drowning out that. Like, yeah. Okay, thanks. Excuse me. That's how you sound sometimes too. You like screeched and screamed into the microphones and all that. So let's please not critique the way other people sound. <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay. <sighs> you guys, I'm thinking of Purple Rain specifically right now. And I think it's because when I was in Paisley Park last night, when we were leaving the, the kind of the display area where the merchandise is, there was a, a purple hoodie, like zip up hoodie with uh, flowers on the inside. And I thought, what's the flowers for? I asked my friend, I said, I get the purple, but why is the flowers? And she, she pointed up and she said, purple rain. And it was the album cover and it has flowers on the sides and it's beautiful. What, what inspired that? What inspired that? He literally says beauty. He says life is beautiful. You know, as much as it's ugly, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's meaningful. You know, all of it means something. He says all of it means something. This is from Prince in the Afterlife. Life is beautiful. All of it means something. All of it. Okay. That was just, I felt that myself. Prince, I know you struggled with um, pain and managing your pain, and which led into an addiction. Can you give us any kind of insight or advice on how to handle addiction, especially during the times of the year when it's really stressful, like the end of the year, like right now, for example? How to handle addiction. He says, what, what, me from a personal perspective? He says, I think, I, I don't think I'm the person, I'm the, I don't think I'm the one that you should ask about that. Because clearly I did not achieve that kind of a thing. He's kind of, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Like he died from that. So he's kind of like saying, I'm not the person you should ask about that. So how can we help people in our lives who are addicts? Can you answer that question for us? Whether it be prescription medication, illegal drugs, gambling, alcohol, whatever it might be. That's really having a, a severe negative impact on their lives and it is, it could kill them. Do you have any advice for us? Oh, he says, oh, man, that's a hard one. He's like, that's a hard, that's a hard one. He says, people won't get well until they're ready. People aren't going to get better until they're ready. You can't love them into convincing them to changing their ways, he says. He's like, you can't change, you can't convince them to change their ways. He's like, love is not going to do it. That's what he says to me. Love is not going to do it. They're not gonna get well until they're ready. But you can, when they are ready and they do wanna get well, every time they ask you for help, give it to them. I'm not talking about money, I'm not talking about drugs, I'm not talking about getting them their supply, I'm not talking about that, I'm not talking about that, the codependency enabling, all that, you guys, he's not talking about that. I'm talking about when they need someone to talk to, when they need to hear it straight, when you have to tell them, hey, you're wrecking your life, you're gonna kill yourself, you have to do it, he says. And you have to tell them over and over and over again. And when they reach out to you for help, don't be afraid to say something wrong and make them run away. Say exactly what you need to say every chance you get. Say exactly what you need to say every chance you get. That's what you do. Then you know you're doing your best. Then you know you've done your best. And he says, and pray, pray, pray to God, pray because you can't do this for them and they can't do it on their own and they think they can, but they cannot. And I know that you think you can, but you cannot. You cannot. If you're an addict and you're listening right now, you think you can do this on your own and you can't. Prince Rogers Nelson from the afterlife, someone who lost his life because of addiction. 
Let's just say it like that. Some of y'all are going to be mad that I said it that way about his death, but that's just the truth. And that's how we're going to say it. That's how we plan this, right? Straight. Because you need to hear it. Yes, you do. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you very much. I'm going to see you today in a little while. Hanging out in Paisley Park. It'll be great. I might get a sweatshirt, actually. I don't have one. Should I get a Paisley Park sweatshirt? Maybe. They're kind of spendy, let me just say. I think they're like 70 bucks for a freaking sweatshirt. He says, I got to pay the bills, you know. <laughs> Even in the afterlife, you have to pay the bills. <laughs> All right, Above Life Channel. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm actually on location in Chanhassen, Minnesota at the Country Inn and Suites Hotel here. That's the place where Prince's band and the roadies and things like that would come and stay here when they were in town. Paisley Park is just up the street. I hope we've inspired your spirit today, given you some hope, encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, so live it just live it. Thanks for being here.